Welcome to Slab Money. Guys, thank you so much for all of your amazing, amazing reviews, comments, and we are so happy to be on this podcast. Uh, I got my main man to the right of me, Yenny. Nah, I'm happy to be here, man. Um, You know, this was, I, I just told Yenny, listen, man, I need you to be the co-host. He said, listen, Mike, whatever you want, I'm here. Uh, Yinny and I have known each other for the last 17 years. We've been talking about sports ever since. Mm -hmm. And sports has been, you know, the background of our lives. Yep. I'm so thankful to be able to just be in this realm and have, you know, have a voice, have an opinion and have you guys listen. So that's really, it, it means a lot to me. And we're going to dive into the NBA. You know, we have an extensive knowledge about NFL, MLB, mm -hmm. NHL, but we're really going to focus in on the NBA right now okay. and talk about what transpired in the bubble, what matchups we're looking for in the playoffs, and then obviously I'll get into the car talk, but it all revolves around the players and it all revolves around current events. I'm not going to tell you guys to buy the guys that I like when I'm talking about like Darius Garland and all these other players that are going to be in the future. Who we'll I get love. to that. But we are going to talk about today players that you can make money on now. Mm. That's what Slab Money is about. Slab Money is to teach you guys how to make the proper investment strategies. You know, there's tons of different collectors that can hold stuff for a while. T some people have a certain bankroll. So I want to teach you guys how to sell and what players to buy. Mm -hmm. But before we do all that, we're going to dive, uh, we're really going to take a deep dive into the actual NBA playoffs. Let's do it. So let's talk about the bubble really quick. Mm -hmm. I got some comments to make about that. Um, I didn't love what I saw in the bubble, but what I can tell you is I'm so grateful that basketball is back. Uh, mm, we too. were all worried about how is it going to affect the card market, how is it going to affect everything, and obviously for the card market, the last thing that was affected is that. Mm. We're in the gold rush season of basketball cards, and cards in general. Bull run. Uh, it's the bull run, it's everything. Cards are like art and Bitcoin, and now it's like a physical, actual, tangible asset. So. Definitely. We're gonna talk about all that. Let's get straight into it. Let's do um, it. I want to talk about the Phoenix Suns, Yenny. Oh my God, undefeated, and you're not gonna make it. It's okay. I mean, they had a rough patch, but Monty Williams, oh man. Oh my God, what a coach! Did you hear that speech that he made? Oh, inspirational. Love that, and he's getting all his young guys riled up. So Ricky, they love him there. They you guys know from him. the breaks. I love Ricky Rubio. Sometimes I'm calling him Ricky Vinicor. <laughs> I think he always has a great eye for the for the field he sees everything on the court he knows exactly what to do with the ball he's similar to quarterback yeah he's a quarter that's exactly what i'm saying when that's what that's why i said the field you yes. know what i mean like, yeah i said the field for that reason so mm -hmm. um cameron johnson mm. incredible incredible player you know number 23 on them like his card skyrocketed as well oh, um good. deandre aiden Mm, first guys, overall pick. Man throws it down. Underrated still, in my opinion. 100%. And he's only going to flourish. So the Phoenix Suns aren't the best market for collecting, but you never know what's going to happen to Devin Booker. You never know who they're going to add. So that's something to take a look at. Like, what were they, 7-0? I think they were 8-0. 8-0. Didn't lose a game. Didn't lose so one much game. game winners. Devin Booker was averaging multiple assists every game, scoring 30-plus a night. That I think Devin stays. Yeah, and his cards, got, his cards literally went 5x, 6x, so... Devin Booker, great player, great player to purchase. Um, let's get into this matchup between the Portland Trailblazers and the Memphis Grizzlies. Okay, a playing game, something First that we've never ever. experienced. Uh, the way it's going to work is very simple. There's going to be two games if the Memphis Grizzlies beat the Blazers the first time. It's going to be very hard for the Grizzlies to come up with two victories very hard. on the Blazers. And the Blazers just match up with them very well. I think Jonas Valanciunas is going to have a difficult time. I don't know who's going to really be scoring. Uh, Dylan Brooks has emerged into a scorer. But he that reminds was... me of a little bit of a Boris Diaw. Yeah, with an outside shot. Yeah. Boris Diaw could just take a three as well. <laughs> Um, so let's get into that. Uh, Yanni, let me hear some stats, li stat lines of Damian Lillard. Last three games, 42 points, 12 assists, 61 points, five rebounds, eight assists, 51 points, three rebounds, seven assists. I mean, those are crazy numbers. At Nobody a, was putting up numbers at like a that. Weber State. Damian As Pusha T would say, numbers on the board. And you know what I love about Lillard? You see the fire in his eyes. Oh my God. You see that that man is on a different time. He said it himself. Put some fucking respect on my name. He did, and he's very vocal, and he's a leader. So I love that. Terry Stotts has all the great things to say about Lillard. Great coach. So his cards already went up. Quick advice on that. Take a profit. I said that earlier. Ja Morant. Right. Adam Murray State. 
This guy is the rookie of the year, yeah. undoubtedly. Um, I love Zion. All you guys that are selling Zion and freaking out about Zion, he averaged a point a minute. This guy's an absolute animal, and there's no reason to panic on Zion. Yes. That's a whole other topic. Um, I don't know how much this is going to affect John Morant's cards if they do lose, but his rookie of the year, that's going to skyrocket his cards already. So, <laughs> love draw, but I'm I'm going Blazers with the win in that series. I um, am too. Jaren just, Jackson's loss is going to be too big for them to overcome. Who's going to score? Mm, I don't know. Who's going to score? Jonas Valanciunas. <laughs> but he's going to get locked down by Joseph Nurtrick and Whiteside. Yeah. They're going to give him. They're going to give him a tough time. I John see. Morant is going to hit thirty points. Yeah. And, and he's going to score and he's going to shine because he sure. he's a competitor. Yes. But Lillard has a little bit more experience. A little bit. Lillard, Lillard's going to teach him. A couple a game bit. winners in the playoffs that we'd we we call historic. So as you guys know, uh, Damian Lillard was drafted in 2012, 2013. That was his year. Um, you know, eight years of experience, well over draw. So that series is going to be pretty interesting. Um, and let's go, you know, remember guys, the cards are important, but it's all about the current events of what's happening in sports. So let's focus on investing in the players that are currently playing. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you Kawhi and Giannis and LeBron. You guys know that already. I want to give you guys the underground players that people might not be thinking about right now that are really going to take that next step. But hit me with some more series. So, I mean, you want to start in the East? Let's go with the West since we're doing all West. Okay, so we got Lakers versus that play-in play, uh, play -in game okay. team. Winner. Listen, I, I, I'm i the one who said don't be sh don't be shocked if Lillard beats them. But they're going to triple team Lillard. You already know Frank Vogel's on that. He's going to make sure that Lillard does not beat them. So look for Lillard to average over 10 assists a game in that. And CJ McCollum's knocking down an open shot. My Gar opinion is that the Lakers win in five. LeBron is zero dark 30 mode. He's been resting. None of the games have been meaningful because they're the one seed. Okay. They're going to turn it up. For sure. And Anthony Davis with Zach Collins and Nurse are covering him. I mean, it's... You know Avery Bradley's a big loss for the Lakers defensively. Oh, definitely. Huge. Definitely. So that's going to... that's gonna, And I don't know how Rondo's going to do just coming back from an injury. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. So... But I obviously know that the Lakers are highly favored. I know that they're, you know, most likely going to win. Don't be shocked on it, but don't bet your dollars. If you have your Lillard card, do not be scared to sell. No. Um, Lillard was my last guy. Now he's already too hype. I want to go to the lower guy. So keep on talking about the, the brackets, and let's uh, go. Who's the 2-7? We got... Oh, 2-7. We got Clippers Mavericks. Clippers Mavericks. I mean, the Mavericks have a lot of bad matchups in that series. Um, Paul George and Kawhi could cover the, the perimeter. Kristaps uh, Porzingis is definitely going to stretch the floor. And if Montrezl Harrell comes back, which they say he will, yes. that's going to be a tough, like, it's going to be a tough matchup for them. Um, but inside in the paint, I think the Clippers get too easy of baskets. Mm -hmm. And I think that the Mavericks will be struggling for baskets. So yes. all you Luka holders, sell your Lukas right now. Don't hold them. Don't wait till they dip. Take your profits, don't be greedy, and move on. And then buy buy Luke a little bit cheaper and sell him for higher. And if you don't need the money, then hold it. But you know, if you wanna if you wanna if you wanna keep your capital rolling, you definitely should be selling and investing in other players. Take your money, take your profits, and be happy, guys. You don't need to hit the exact peak. Let someone else make money. This is what the hobby's about. It's about Spreading the love, making your profits, and moving on. So I got the Clippers in that series. I think the bus the buckets are just going to be easy. And who do you got there? Uh, I have the Clippers only because I believe Luca is the star of that team that could lead him there. But he's going to be guarded by Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. Yeah, two of the best perimeter defenders. Luca's in the still going to put up his NBA. numbers. He's an animal. He's like I've never seen a slow motion fast forward type of guy in my life. Like Luca, he mm. takes his time, but he's wide open. Game. He's just like Mr. Triple Double. Uh, what's three and six? Three and six, we have the Thunder and the Rockets. Why in the world does Russell Westbrook have to miss the most important series of his career? Why? But that's the way it works. Listen, Russell, get better soon. Um, Chris Paul has a lot to prove there. So we got Thunder and Rockets right after that one in the next piece of the bracket. Okay, well, listen... It sucks that Russell Westbrook's going to miss that series. Hopefully he comes back and plays a game or something. I mean, the storylines in that are going to be crazy. I mean, Traded for each other. James Harden's return to OKC. Okay. He's going to go crazy. Crazy. SGA can't cover him. But the thing, the thing with SGA in that series is the way the Rockets play, they play such small ball. They don't really want to play too much defense. 
He's going to have a lot of open shots. He's going to have a lot of open shots, and I love SGA. His cards are going to skyrocket if the Thunder win, and there's a chance that they do. Regardless, SGA cards are through the roof right now. PSA 10s are going for over 400, and that's just the beginning of it. So mm-hmm. You can have a, a big series. SGA is my guy in that series to have a huge series, mm-hmm. but the Oklahoma City Thunder have one X Factor. Hmm. Danilo Gallinari. Wow. This guy is on the perimeter. He's taking it into the rim. Mm. He's doing a lot of stuff unconventional, and he is just making it look easy. That European type of basketball, he does not look like he ages. He's been in the league for a long time, and he consistently scores on every given night. So that is my X Factor. And Steven Adams Mm. is going to give the Rockets some trouble. Especially with the Rockets playing small ball. Of course. Who's going to cover him? Robert Covington? Uh, It's going to be tough. DJ Tucker? That's going to go to a seven-game series. That's going to be a... Yeah, I think so. That's going to be a seven-game series. James Harden's going to get buckets. Um, SGA is my guy to really look into for cards. Especially with Chris, the way he's playing, and he's going to facilitate the ball that way to him. Chris... Chris is a Hall of Famer. Oh, He's yeah. the most underrated player in the NBA. It was Lillard, and now Lillard already got his first shine. First ballot. First ballot Hall of Famer, because this guy is the first ever player coach that we've seen in a long time. Mm-hmm. This guy is a teacher on the court. And the way the bubble is set up, this, the fact that there's no fans, he's the ultimate vocal guy. Of course. From the bench or on the court. No matter where he is. So that's going to be something super interesting. He's a tacticianist, moving his players around, and if he's on the bench... Cheering them on, telling them what to do, and he's giving—he's instilling all the confidence in SGA. Oh my God, yeah, they're best friends. Did you see them? I feel like he—he he asked for SGA to be traded with him. Of course, because yeah. Chris Paul knows what he wants to do. He said, "Bring him." With not me. only is Chris Paul a coach, he's a GM, he's a player, he's yeah. everything. So let's go to the next series. This is a very important series mm. for the card market. Yinny, what do we got? We got Jazz Nuggets. Mm. Jazz Nuggets, a grind fest. <sighs> so is listen, how you call that? Utah Jazz, the Utah Jazz, uh-huh. are one of the most dominant teams in Utah. <laughs> it's a different, you know, it's a mm-hmm. different, it's a different atmosphere. It's hard to score there. Yes. Um, and in Utah, they're a very hard team to beat. I think that they have a strong disadvantage in the bubble. Mm, no, but no crowd. It's not no crowd. The Utah Jazz. It's it's, it's going to be a little tough. Mm-hmm. But my X factor for the Utah Jazz always is Donovan. Oh, sorry. It's Joe Inglis. Mm. Joe Inglis is the X the factor Australian. for the X factor for the Utah Jazz. Yep. It's a no brainer. Lights I mean, out shooter, dude. He's a lights out shooter. He always knows what to do with the ball. Also moves a little bit slow, but he's throwing hard out worker who played above his athletic ability. A hundred percent. It's not all about athleticism. It's just grinding. It's just about being a smart basketball. The IQ is everything. Yes. And uh, Royce O'Neal spreading the floor. Mm-hmm. Not a bad player whatsoever. Yeah. And Jordan Clarkson's putting up buckets on the bench. Oh, yeah. And don't forget about Mike Conley. No oh, man. Yeah. Mike Conley, I mean, Grizzlies legend, would you say? Grizzlies ring of honor? Yeah, and Ohio State legend for sure with mm-hmm. Greg Oden and everything else. Like, that guy did wonders over there. So he's He is the X factor. I'm going to say this right now. Michael Porter Jr. is a great basketball player, and I'm not taking anything away from him, but Donovan Mitchell is better. And the fact that Michael Porter Jr. cards are selling for double than Donovan Mitchell seems like a mistake in the market. So... Yes. If Donovan Mitchell loses, you're going to have to wait till next year for Mitchell to really rebound his cards. Mm-hmm. But that's a 50 50 series. Oh, it's and if be Donovan a Mitchell fest. beats the Denver Nuggets, yeah. Mitchell cards are going to go through the roof. I love Mitchell. I'm going to tell you guys what cards you should be buying of Mitchell's. Mm-hmm. And we're going to get into what cards are the right cards to buy because. That's a very important thing with cards. Of course. With sports cards, it's not only about the player. It's about what card, what pack, what team is he on. It's not always about who's the best player. It's not. Because Kawhi Leonard cards sell, but they should be selling for way more. You know I mean? It's about their charismatic off the court. It's about what they do, how they dress, how they speak, what brands are dealing with. It's a lot of different stuff that goes into the card. So we'll see what happens. But Donovan Mitchell wins that series. That's going to be huge. Who do you got going out of the West? Mm. It's a it's an easy pick, they would say. But I say the Lakers. LeBron, okay. zero dark 30. Anthony Davis, shooters around him. Danny Green, J.R. Smith, kick it out. Pick and roll, right? It's going to be tough to stop. JaVale then- McGee is nice. And Dwight. Both of them are great for that position that they're playing. They're just in a role that fits them. Now, the thing that I like about them is that whoever they face, LeBron has to guard the best player. 
and that's not easy for anyone. I don't care if you're Luka Doncic. I don't care if you're uh, Donovan Mitchell. I don't care if you're anyone. When LeBron's guarding you, it's going to be tough for you. He is going to clamp you up. He is going to go zero dark 30. He's going to go playoff mode. And he is going to be who he's always been, LeBron. LeBron James. Yes. So you got the Lakers coming out of the West. I see them coming out of the West. I see them beating the Blazers in five. Okay. Then I see a tougher matchup for them later on to get like the winner of the Thunder and Rockets. But I think they, they win that one. And then the Clippers probably will play them. It'll be a very, very tough series. But I, I see the, the Lakers squeaking by. Okay. For some reason, mm-hmm. I have a feeling that you're not going to see the Lakers. Mm. You're not going to see the Clippers. Mm. And you're not going to see the Bucks. Mm. I know that's a very ballsy statement, okay. but this is a very different league, and this is going to be a di- very different playoffs, and there's a lot of X factors that we don't really know about. Yes. These guys are all staying next to each other. These guys are all are in the bubble, mm-hmm. and i just not going to be surprised if someone does something there. My job is to tell you what sports cards to invest in. Yes. I know about the cards. I don't want to sit here and, and give a false opinion on something that I don't know <laughs> about, but what I said was a bold statement mm. that the Lakers, Clippers, and Bucks don't do it. We'll see. I'm not going to rule them out. This is a bold statement. You know, they're obviously all ha- heavily favored. The Lakers are plus 200. The Clippers are plus 300. The Bucks are probably right, th- right there, and then everyone else is dark seeds. Don't be surprised if the Houston Rockets make it. Oh, no. Russell Westbrook gets back. I know they're playing small ball, but if they're dropping 140 points a game, it's, you're not going to beat them. So... The problem I see for them is Anthony Davis. Yeah, it's going to be a tough matchup. Small but, ball is not going to work against that PJ guy because t- he is basically <laughs> dribbling down the court. He's a big, big man. And he can dribble. So, players that I'm spotlighting, Donovan Mitchell, SGA. Okay. And now let's head over to the East. Okay, in the East, we got Bucks Magic. Pff, one gonna verse be, eight. It's going to be an easy one for the Bucks. Yeah, I say f- four. Yeah, four four oh. sweet. What else? Uh, right after that, on the same bracket, we got our Miami Heat versus the Indiana Pacers, the TJ Warren Jimmy Butler matchup. I love that you haven't mentioned my dark horse. Guys, I know if you've been listening in the past few days, I've been talking heavily about this guy, Victor Oladipo. Mm. And we're going to get into the cards later, but 13 14 Prism. That was his rookie class. And it's hard as hell to find boxes from that class. Of course. And that they're not ripping every day. So it's very difficult to find that inventory. Victor Oladipo is a stud. Mm. He went to Indiana. He balled out on the Magic. Then went to the Thunder. Balled out on the Thunder. Mm. And got a severe... And balled out on the Pacers and got a really, really bad knee injury. I have sources close to Victor Oladipo. And they tell me that he is in the best mental shape of his... Best mental attitude, shape, however you want to call it, of his life. Mm. He is in the gym. And he's back in Orlando where he got drafted. So that's going to give you some, you know what I mean? Don't mm-hmm. be surprised if he gets those juices flowing in mm-hmm. Orlando. Like, um, I love Victor Oladipo as an investment. I'm not saying that they're going to beat the Heat. I think the Heat are going to win. I think the Heat are a better team. But the Pacers do match up well with the Heat, and that series is going to go to seven. TJ Warren, he's great, but during the playoffs, there's a reason why TJ Warren's TJ Warren. Mm-hmm. And you're going to see... Jimmy Butler locking him down. An angry Jimmy Butler. A very angry Jimmy Butler. And you're going to see Victor Oladipo making some big shots. And also, don't forget about Malcolm Brogdon. Malcolm Brogdon won, ro- won Rookie of the Year, and a lot of people slept on him. I Brogdon. love him as a role player. Everyone forgot about him. He's he was just a 24 year old Rookie of the Year, so they didn't give him as an, enough credit. And I can compare that to Kendrick Nunn, as Kendrick Nunn isn't getting the same love in the card community. Yes. But now it's actually starting to increase because that guy is a stud. Mm. Bam Adebayo is probably the most Ooh. dominant five man in the NBA. What a Incredible. great what a great trade the Heat made for him. Like to, to get rid of Hassan Whiteside. Like love Hassan Whiteside, actually a good friend of mine. Shout out to Whiteside. But his 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 you know, him being in Portland is fine and that's gonna be a really, really close, grimy series. If Victor Oladipo and the Pacers beat the Miami Heat, his cards are skyrocketing. So mm. I'll tell you about what cards I think you guys should buy for for those players, but let's hit on to the next series. Three six, we got Celtics Sixers. No Embiid, no Simmons. Hey, man, they look like they're not going to make it there. <sighs> Tobias Harris is averaging 35 a game. Kemba Walker's getting back healthy. Brad Stevens. One of the best. A call. young I Popovich. Lo- I love him. A young Popovich. Greg, please don't take that to heart. Please. <laughs> please. He, like, yeah, like, yeah, it's fine. 
Yeah, and I mean, uh, how about Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown in that series? What do you I think love when Jason Tatum went two for 16 his first game in the bubble and everyone was freaking yeah. out. This guy is incredible. <laughs> um, I've made bold statements in the past. I think Donovan Mitchell is better. I would tend to agree. He's I, more of a creator. I love Jason Tatum. I'm not taking anything away from him. Yeah. I just think Donovan Mitchell is more of a... Take Tatum away from the Celtics, they still got a squad. Take Donovan Mitchell away from the Jazz, they're the worst team in the league. I think it's still to be unseen. Of course. They're both so young that we'll have to we'll have to give them a few years. Listen, really... I make some bold statements. I like to get grimy and gritty, and I like to say things that people don't say because they're scared and they always want to be perfect. Yes. I'm not scared to be wrong. Perfect. I'm not scared to be wrong. Um, I'm telling you how I feel from the heart. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, obviously, Celtics should should have uh, should win in five. Um, what's next? I'm gonna go Raptors Nets the two versus the seven. It's gonna be interesting. The Nets have been playing out of their mind in the bubble, and they don't have Kyrie and KD. Oh ah, KD! Don't get me started on KD. He's one of my favorite players in the world. I he think is... he's unguardable, and he's got a chip on his shoulder. And he went to the Nets because of all the stuff they talked about at Golden State. Hundred <laughs> percent. And I think next year and there's Ky- not. There's not many who can be able to guard him. Kyrie and him are looking like they're on the same page. Raptors have a great defense. They're gonna they're gonna beat them. Yeah, Raptors are gonna win. I think it'll be tougher than people expect. Of course. I'm gonna make a little prediction and say goes to six. My guy is Victor Oladipo in this playoff run as my dark horse. I want you guys to do you know I guys I want you guys to make money. Yes. I uh, give you guys advice all the time on cards. And when I was telling you to guys. Buying Victor Oladipo through 350, those prices are already gone. There's bids right now for 400 current, and they're going to go to 500. Um, so Victor Oladipo is great. Um, we're going to, like, obviously we touched on, you know, we touched on all the games. Yes. Um, now I want to get into the cards. Mm. Um, Victor Oladipo, what card should you be buying of Victor Oladipo's? I like NTRPAs. Great. National Treasures True RPA to 99 is a, an amazing card. Uh, goes for tons of money. Try to get them graded. PSA 10, BGS 9.5, hopefully True Gem Plus, but even a BGS 9.5 is okay. And PSA 9s are starting to go for a lot more than people than they used to yeah. because PSA really controls the population report. Mm. So the more cards that get sent to PSA, the more they have to control the 10s, which therefore means that the PSA 9s are going to have a way more, they're going to have a way higher card than the raw cards. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, of course. So that's going to, that like, just buy them graded. Uh, I, like, you want them graded now, and you want to try to sell them during the playoff run. So that's something I love. I love Victor Oladipo. I love buying cards in rookie years that people don't have all the time. So once that card goes up, it really goes up because supply and demand. That's the way it works. The supply is like this. The demand's like this. Once the demand goes like this, the card's going to go like that. Mm. The card, they're not going to remake the card, but the cards are going to go yes. up in value. So I love Victor Oladipo. Like, not a big investment, but I love Oladipo. So you heard it here first. Now, Donovan Mitchell mm-hmm. said that as well. Love him. Love SGA. Yeah. Those are my three guys. I think he could be inflated in that Houston series. His numbers could go bonkers. 25 points, 8 assists, 4 rebounds. Just because... The Mike D'Antoni style, he wants to he wants you to score, does, so they yeah. can score back as fast as they can. And Chris Paul's going to be setting him up left and right. Oh, great! Yeah. And Danilo Gallinari is going to be putting up his points. So that's that. Um, I want to talk to you guys about some of the most undervalued cards, right? And this doesn't pertain to just what I'm talking about with these players. This pertains to all across the board. Prism hypers, okay? Mm. Prism hypers only come out of Prism hobby. Every Prism Hobby box is minimum $3,000. Very expensive box. Hypers only come out of those boxes. So the market hasn't really adjusted yet because the information is not there. Everyone's focusing on silvers and pinks and greens and all Mm -hmm. these different colorways. But hypers should be worth more than silvers. The population report on hypers is way less than silvers. So at some point, the hypers are going to exceed the silvers or, or get closer to them. So... Prism Hobby Hypers from any year. Look into that. Great card. I agree. Doesn't have to be only rookies, veterans, etc. That is a great card. Second, Select Zebras. Mm. Shout out to Steve Canal running our business development family. We appreciate you, brother. Thank you for helping us set up this podcast and everything else. And shout I, out to Steve Canal. Shout out to Steve Canal. And what I really, really think is those zebras. Mm-hmm. 
are going to skyrocket. Why do I think that? Select hobby is fifteen hundred dollars plus an MBA. Eighteen, nineteen, two K. Seventeen, eighteen, fifteen hundred. The mm-hmm. prices are getting very high, and in select, in every case, there's a zebra. Mm. So out of twelve boxes, that's a zebra. You're talking about a case that's almost twenty thousand oh, dollars. And you get one. One, and you get Lori Marketing okay. and Cameron Payne okay. and Lori and all that stuff. You know what I mean? So it's very difficult to hit a good zebra. Yeah. So I love those zebra cards. Especially Steve, if don't you get mad at me. My job is to give you guys information. Like I, we can't withhold. So that's Especially it. Especially if you get Darius Garland. Oh, well, that's that's another that's a, that's another thing. That's on our sleeper. She's still sleeping. <laughs> um. So, so that's that zebra cards. Um. I love the the hyper cards. And then another card that I really, really, really like is prism variations. Not the disco variations, but the prism variations. They come in hangers. Um, very hard to get and obviously they're super expensive. It's a retail product, but they're still super duper expensive. And those prism variations are super low pop report. So okay. like the Zions, the ball in one hand, anytime uh, what a variation is, is it's a picture, a different picture of a player and it's a base card. Mm. So look into those variations. That shit is sick. Um, those cards are really, really, really awesome. And that's my hot take for what cards you should be buying and what cards you should be looking for. Because as a new collector, you don't know where to go. Yeah. The information's not there. You so need guidance. You need guidance on what do you buy. And sometimes it's expensive, but you need to know what you're investing in. Of course. Don't cheap out. Scared money makes no, no money. money. You need to focus on the cards that make sense, but not just the cards. Don't go out and buy a Ty Jerome or an Alec Jerome Hyper, Okay. <laughs> Focus on the players that are actually going to be good. And I'm not talking about the LeBron James and the Kawhi Leonard's. I'm talking about the players that have, you know, value, growth potential. Growth potential and we'll just get into it right away. Darius Garland. We both love him. Oh, man. I love this guy. Fifth he, overall pick. 20 years old. Played ne- 30 minutes. 12 points per game as a rookie. 20 years old in the NBA. How do you play 30 minutes a game? 30 minutes a game, yeah. What people don't like about Garland is he wasn't getting to the free throw line, but he was also a little timid. He's a young guy. He's a young guy. They, they, they were getting blown out every game, so you're not necessarily trying to draw a foul, and you're just at the three-point line making buckets. The two things I love about Garland the most is that he has no competition for his job. Correct. He's going to play 33 minutes next year. For sure. 34 minutes. Him at the one, Sexton at the two. The second thing I like, the East 7 and 8, well, with Durant coming back, the eight yeah, but is what, open. The Nets aren't going to be a seven seed. They're going to be a three seed. I just think the East bottom two are always open. The Cavs can make it there. And if it's led by Garland and he plays 33 minutes and he averages 18, 19 points, his, his cards are going up. His silver PSA 10s right now are 200 bucks. Yeah. And they'll be... That's six, cheap. They'll be six to 700. They will. That's just the way it goes. Um, and I love his supporting cast. Ke- Kevin Porter Jr. Mm-hmm. They just need a veteran. Yeah. I mean, Kevin loves there. I don't know how long he's going to stay there. Yeah. But they're rebuilding. They're getting their young players to play. Because the NBA is all about time. Of course. How much you, how many Every times, sport is. How many minutes you play. You know, there's rookies like Grant Williams and Carson Edwards who don't get a chance to play just because they play for the Celtics. There's I like too Carson many Edwards, but that's later on. There's too many good people in front of them. Of course. Kemba Walker. The yeah. thing with with Garland, he has nobody to compete with. He will start next year. He'll be in there for every important moment of every game. And I, like I said, he's about to be 21. This guy can barely buy a beer at the bar if he wanted to. Depends what bar, but yeah. I mean, I'm sure if he goes to the Liv, I can help him out. But yes. he should be focusing on his basketball Call us, Garland. Career. We'll get you the Liv. Um, so... Listen, um, you know, that's really cool. A player that I love. Mm-hmm. Seiko Dumbaya. Um, you guys have to understand that the dunk, and when you slam it, when you slam it down, mm-hmm. that hype is just there. That's what's going to happen with Zion, his alley-oops and everything else. Like That hype is there. Seiko Dumbaya, they're rebuilding around them. The Detroit Pistons don't really have anybody. No. And not necessarily does he have to make the playoffs, but he is 19 years old. Mm. So if you think Darius Garland's going to have trouble getting a beer, <laughs> Seku might have one as well. Exactly. Um, Seku, I love him. I've been collecting him a lot. I've been holding, you know, the silvers, the hypers, the green prisms. Prism is the Rolex of sports cards. You need to focus on prism. You need to focus on buying that prism card because that's the card that is going to attain the most value. So... And, I mean, the big thing, like I said, with, uh, with Seiko is no competition for his role. 
He's going to play. He's going to play. They're going to give him minutes. Which is the most important thing to me. 100%. I mean, As a young guy trying to be in the league and trying to progress your game and learn, you need to play. And this uh, 2021 class is going to be super interesting for the NBA. I think 1920 obviously is, is an incredible year, but I think after this year, it's going to skyrocket. Mm. Tyler Hero is going to be dropping buckets. I love Hero. Love him. He plays wise beyond his years. I know everyone's got, worried about his Instagram and his this and that. When that guy is in the gym, his focus is basketball. He's got fire to him. So this guy has swag. This guy knows how to dress. This guy has the whole nine <laughs> yes. yards. He got that Miami swag. I met Tyler, super nice guy. Hopefully we get him on the podcast. Hopefully they get you know get a big win um, against the Pacers. And I think the Heat are making the finals. Mm. I think the Heat are making the finals. They match up against the Bucks better than anybody. Um, they have Bam Adebayo that can cover Giannis. I think that... Can we talk about Giannis's headbutt? Oh, wow. Um, I got a couple things to say about that. One, I was complaining that there was no fierceness in the NBA, that there was no fire, that there was no anything, and that everyone was so timid. <laughs> and I loved that Giannis showed his passion. Now, yes. I what I'm scared about is that Giannis has built up frustration around this team, and I don't know exactly what that boils down to. Um, the guy can get to the rim, rim at will, but I just feel that there's something off with the team. Hopefully they can get that together. I think that it's just because they clinched the first seed and they were kind of parking the bus. That's fine. Why more it's Wagner? Why more it's Wagner? Well, what Giannis said after the game was that there was a lot of talking during the game and a lot of dirty fouls that he didn't feel were necessary. But Giannis is a great guy. If you follow him, I mean, he's a... He does the most work for the community. He's always a nice guy. He's always like doing the right thing. He's saying the right thing. I mean, after the game, he said, I regret everything I did. If I could go back in time, I would change it. I mean, but Giannis is, is showcasing his fierceness. Like That's what I wanted to yes, see out of Zion aggression. Williamson. He looked like he was friends with everybody on the court. Like, <laughs> You're a 6'11", man. Elb like, I'm playing in rec leagues, and I'm getting elbowed in the face. I'm what four foot seven like getting el obviously i'm not like that small but i'm getting you know like get get physical man stop running to the rim so quick and just missing a layup slam that shit down stop and slam it don't you know what i mean like he's, he's yes. tweaking his head. he's young he'll figure it out i but think him leaving the bubble was a big deal but it was for family matters so that's for sure respectable for sure but i think that hurt him in terms of fitness and just playing time and practice time and those things affected him in the bubble. 100%. And Alvin Gentry won't be there next year. I don't think I so. I like Alvin Gentry. You like him? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I like was, him as an assistant. He had a tutelage on their Kerr, Steve Kerr. and I think he's a great coach. That's okay. just my opinion. Okay. Um, so that's really all about the bubble. Um, oh, also, the Magic... Uh, what was it? It was the Magic Nets game. They added some fierce at the end of the game. Yeah, a little bit of co a little bit of competition. Hundred percent, and I like that. That's the fiercest. That's how you know the playoffs are on the horizon. So, super excited to see what happens with the playoffs. I uh, hope we gave you guys some insight on what players, you know, what you got, you know, who to invest in, yeah. what to do. We really wanted to give our background and our opinions about, you know, the games and everything else because that's super relevant to what's happening. Of course. And we're really super excited to start diving into football, start diving into baseball. You know, Lewis Robert is doing incredible. Mm -hmm. Joe Adele, mm -hmm. I like him. He had a really fun Alex play in Alex Bob the just got called up that, on the Phillies. That's going to be interesting. Third overall pick in 2018. That's going to be interesting. He doubled in his first at bat. Okay. <laughs> so obviously you never know. And then NFL, man. Wow. Oh, man. Right around the corner. We're fan we love fantasy the football. The best sport. In and, my opinion, uh, my, fav here. my favorite. At least. Same here. So we're gonna we're we're gonna have Yenny back on the show all the time. We're gonna be talking about NFL. We got fantasy football coming up. So can't wait for that. That's gonna be sick. I already got a couple people that are gonna join our fantasy football league. Mm -hmm. Some of the names: Ryan Shazier, Steve Canal, Adam Lefko. Mm -hmm. We got some serious competition. Kelly Olynyk's gonna join our league, and I'm still gonna win. Um, so it's gonna be super <laughs> interesting. Um, we're really excited about fantasy football. We're really gonna dive deep into investments for that right now it's still basketball playoffs are on the horizon i still want to make some money i still want you guys to make some money and be profitable on that um something that i wanted to talk about with psa i've been seeing a lot of people uh send their cards into psa and bgs mm -hmm. and what people don't understand is reviewing the cards is very important because there might be some dimples, there might be some scratches, there might be certain things on the card Corners. so you need to just really examine the card prior to you sending it out 
Um, you don't need to slab every single card because it does take time. And sometimes you get PSA 8s and PSA 7s that you can't sell that go for less than a raw card. <laughs> so do your homework and figure out what you want to do. There's so many different things, like whether it's off-centered or whether there's marks on it or whether there's back imprints or line prints or you know corners and edges there's so many different variables when it comes to grading a card mm -hmm. so be careful before you just start sending everything in because it's not the way it goes I anymore. agree they control the population report you got to be very careful when it comes to sending it in and obviously just DM slab money podcast if you guys have any questions uh, my main thing that I wanted you guys to do is give us content that you guys want us to speak about I know a lot of people wanted to know about the undervalued players what exact cards to buy i think we touched on everything we gave some statistical information we gave some you know opinionated stuff and we gave you what we believe in so i hope that you guys got some value behind this podcast uh we got a studio to be shooting our podcast in so now we're gonna have video and audio uh we look forward to getting our sponsors we look forward to just keep on the getting this traction and i appreciate to all my followers that showed so much love on this podcast you know reposting it on their stories giving us five stars just thank you guys spreading that word you guys spreading the word on the podcast motivates us to take time out of our day to come and do this so take a you know we love you guys we have a ton of guests coming up we have tons of stuff coming up so stay tuned and uh, I want you guys to blow up Adam Lefko and tell him to get his ass on the channel. We're going to do a video conference with him for the next one. So that's super exciting. And uh, stay tuned for everything, man. We got the Polax merch coming. That's going to be dropping soon. We got tons of team breaks all the time. I'm selling slabs. I'm buying slabs. I'm buying cards. So reach out to us. Talk to us. And we want to make this the number one media brand in sports. We want to turn this into the breakfast club of sports. I want to be interviewing tons of players. I want to be playing video games with them, ripping boxes with them. I know we got John Collins that is going to be on the show, so super excited for that. I'm a big John Collins PC. I love him. I player collect him. I think the Atlanta Hawks have such a bright future with oh, Trey yes. Young. Trey, don't get me started on Trey. DeAndre Hunter is a great defensive player. Cam Reddish could throw it down. I think they have all the pieces to the puzzle, and I think the Hawks and the Grizzlies are the two futures of the nba so really look forward to that yinny i can't wait to get into football man obviously oh. that's our passion it's gonna be super exciting and let's see how uh you know basketball unfolds let's see uh who wins who loses what's gonna be happening and man it's gonna be a great playoffs it's just interesting no home field advantage rockets heat that's my bold that's i, I like being bold I like being bold. Okay. Um, we'll see. I, I mean, it's going to be tough. Who do you got? Lakers Heat. Lakers Heat. Lake, oh, so you got the Heat too. I say they match up with the Bucks well too. Yeah, they match up very well with the Bucks. Yeah. And Duncan Robinson's making threes, and Eric Bledsoe's getting frustrated. And I love Eric Bledsoe. Let's see. He's the X Factor. On the and Bucks. Spolster is. Eric Bledsoe's the X Factor on the Bucks. Yeah, for sure. By far. Yeah. Eric Bledsoe's mini LeBron. <laughs> if he can put up, you know, 16 points, if he can average 30 points, rebounds, and assists a game. It's going to be a big problem to beat them. Oh, yeah. It's going to be sure. a huge problem to beat them. So we'll see how that goes. Thank you, guys. Uh, leave five stars. Comment on this YouTube video. Let us know what you like. Let us know what you didn't like. Shout out to our producer, Alec Jerome, for, for editing this video and setting this all up. We really appreciate it. Much love to our brother. And... Uh, Really stay tuned. Shout out to the Polax team, man. Philly Flips, Tony Lomenzo, Ben Brodsky, Lil Pullman, Mestre, the whole nine yards. Sniper Man, this is helping us out with PSA submissions. Like that's another uh, avenue that we're gonna uh, that we're gonna launch soon is the PSA submissions. We're gonna be helping you guys submit all your cards and doing everything properly. And don't forget, guys, when you pull cards, sleeve that, that up. up. And when you're with some girls that, you know, just sleeve that <laughs> up. So we love you guys so much. This is the new Polax hoodie. You know, very nice and clean. Mm. Very cool. Mm. And that's, uh, some drip. that's about it, guys. Thank you so much. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh, we're going to get, you know, we're going to take a, di a deep dive into football, baseball, fantasy football. That's on the horizon. The draft, everything mm. is on the horizon. So um, we'll see you guys soon. Thank you very much. Thank Tons of new products coming out. I'm going to be doing some reviews on the podcast for some of the new products, getting guests, the whole nine yards. Thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. It really means a lot to us for you guys to listen to this. And drop us some stars, baby. Take care. Five of them. All right, we're done. Was that good? Yeah, it was good. We killed it or not? I think so. <laughs> Stop recording. No, don't do it. Don't do anything, right. bro. The algo just cut it. You think we killed it? I think we did it very well.
I think so. Yo. We kept it professional, but fun and good. No. Yeah. 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 Is it done now? Yo, Alex. 